you're a lawyer by profession, um, but now you're doing pineapple industries, doing fashion, Filipino fashion at that. How and why? I just think that it's the the most underappreciated part of our culture. I, I, not everyone, it's not a very widely worn garment amongst Filipinos, and so my goal has been to make sure that every Filipino has one. Uh, uh, men, women, all genders, and you know whether they buy it from me or not, I just want to make it something that people want to wear. How did you um, end up starting Pineapple Industries? So I needed a barong myself, and this is back in 2013, and I couldn't find one that I liked. Uh, I, I didn't I didn't really love my choices, and so um, I would look around uh, anywhere where I could find them, whether it be online or in stores, anywhere around the country, and uh, there was nothing that really fit my taste. And so I was waiting for a couple of years for somebody to make a barong that I liked and, and fit my taste, and nobody came along. And so I, I decided in 2015 that I would do it myself, and so I went to the Philippines just to find the best barongs I could possibly find. And, I wound up with uh, my partners in Lumban Laguna, and so you know these are these are uh, people from generations of of tradition of making barongs. You're calling it the calado, right? The embroidery in the barongs. Yeah, correct. Yes, the hand embroidery is called calado, right? Right, right. But it's just one aspect of the barong. In fact, I wanted to ask you about pineapple industries because yes, we know that most barongs are made of pineapple fabric. But there's also abaca fabric, there's also different kinds of fabric. Uh, correct. Uh, I wouldn't say that most barongs are made of, of, of pineapple leaf fibers just because like it's a very expensive fabric to make and a lot of people are kind of afraid of it actually. So um, I pride myself on pushing that piña fabric because um, it's still made exactly the same way as it's been made for hundreds of years and there's no automation and it's, you know, it's employing people uh, in, in Aklan. Right. So um, I, I love the fact that, you know, it's still a very, I guess, authentic yes. and original uh, fabric of ours. And it's very, very specific to the Philippines. And so I want to push that as much as possible. But yes, there, uh, like Abaca, that's a, also a very uh, historically common uh, barong fabric as well. But a lot of the barongs you see nowadays are made of husi. Yes. So um, that's more of like a, a silk. And that, that's the most common. It's usually the least expensive, the most affordable. But, uh, but yeah, I, I pride myself on pushing the piña fabric just because um, it's, I, in my opinion, it's the most beautiful fabric there is. I mean, I've tried to find a substitute fabric that is as beautiful as that naturally, and, and I just couldn't find it, so. Beauty of what you're doing is also you're keeping the tradition and the culture alive. And I like that. Um, Thank you. How difficult is it, though? It's very difficult because um, people are used to certain price points for barongs and so uh, you know you can get a barong for a very very affordable price and I charge substantially more than they do and, and that's because I have my barongs completely handmade so we make your barong afterwards they are not mass produced and so the hand embroidery itself takes about four weeks and then the tailoring takes a couple days so it's about a month production time. And so, um, you know, just uh, something that labor intensive is, is going to cost more. But I, I pride myself also on trying to make it as reasonably priced as, for what it is uh, as possible, just because I have a lot of people working. There's, there's working hours, a lot of working hours put into that one barong. And yours is actually quite unique because the business model, um, you don't have a brick and mortar, mortar. You actually go to your clients. Um, what are the struggles? It's. Uh, it's obviously the, the toll on me because I would travel. So I come here to California a ton because people in California support me the most. And so uh, I live all the way in New York and uh, yeah, just the travel just really wears on you. It takes a lot of time. And uh, just getting the timing correct as well with people's schedules, it's a lot of logistics. And so um, that alone is, uh, it, it, it's extremely challenging. It's hard to coordinate at times, but it, it's all worth it when, when I'm able to meet with a client in person and to have that personal uh, customization for each each barong. Because people are usually very, very satisfied with how they fit when, when I'm able to measure them in person. What about during the pandemic? I'm sure when you were not able to travel, there were even more difficulties and um, challenges to overcome. 
Gosh, uh, you know, the pandemic threw a monkey wrench into a lot of my plans. Uh, the only way that I would make barongs prior to the pandemic was I would come to you and measure you in person if I made a barong for you. And so the pandemic has forced me to become more flexible with that. So we were doing Zoom calls and, and FaceTime calls to, to have people measure themselves at home. And so uh, we're going to continue doing that to be flexible. And that's going to be easier on me because th there's going to be less travel time. So where do you plan to take this? The other challenge with uh, trying to travel to every, everyone and to measure them in person, you know, sometimes I wouldn't have enough time or avail availability to be able to meet someone's timeline because a lot of these barangs are for special occasions, sometimes weddings, sometimes graduations, what have you. And um, yeah, coordinating that time or having that time on my end was, was a real challenge. So being able to be flexible and to meet in person and be able to do it online is a big help. So I want to hopefully get more uh, more clients that way and um, I'm also going to be moving into more of a ready-to-wear offerings like like the barong that I the barong that I'm wearing right now more like everyday barongs because like if you look at my barongs now my offerings like everything is in the natural fabric color and that's because those are those are formal barongs and so I, I started an everyday line because you know that's how the barong started it was it was everyday wear it wasn't formal wear this is what we did everything in our work everything this is what we wore every day and so that's why i call it that but some people in the philippines they call it like the soot mayama and then like office barongs work barongs so like i call it the everyday barong and and so uh, i want to off offer more ready to wear options uh, so that people can just wear this garment and, and like let people know that okay i'm filipino and i can do this every day i can wear this every day so um so yeah so I, i'd like to like also venture out into other products besides clothing but other filipino products so um there's that and I want to work with other designers, other Filipino designers as well, uh, just to uh, widen my offerings because I offer one garment mm -hmm. and, and, and that's plenty. I do want to, I, I run into a lot of very, very talented Filipino designers and so I want to work with them as well. So I'm trying to expand what I offer and what, you know, what I've got my hands in. And I like that. Uh, first, you said you started this because you wanted to keep the culture alive. And then and now you're doing not just another C word, but just collaborating with other Filipinos and promoting other products, right? But then um, since you're in that business, I know that some people will only wear Barong Tagalog, as you said, for special occasion. Right. But we're trying to change that as well because right. it's so nice like that too, like yeah, an everyday. Thank you. And I, di I never knew of that term, Gusot Mayaman. I didn't know that, right? Oh, you didn't know that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why is it called Gusot? Is like priest in Tagalog. Right. Like, so um, I was told and I've heard that, that the rough translation of that is like wrinkled clothes of the rich. Ah, or like because it yeah. wrinkles easily it, some it of wrinkle, them do right exactly because right, right, some yeah. of them are made of linen so right. like, some are made of like uh, like rami like this right and so it wrinkles extremely easily mm -hmm. and like um i guess it's kind of like a way to make people not feel about the wrinkles so right. like okay it's still wrinkled but it's still nice enough so that you look rich or, right. or that. it also, doesn't yeah it looks and as you said it's not cheap right, right? so yeah. it's like you know um and so with that said let's end with your tips on how they can take care of their barong tagalog. Okay, top three tips. Do not iron it. Uh, that, uh, yeah, that's a big like killer of the fabric because it just sucks out all the moisture and makes it brittle. Do not dry clean it because that will also be very, very harsh and probably damage the fabric. Um, it sounds like a good idea, but it's really not. And uh, steam is your friend. So steaming is the best way to uh, to infuse uh, moisture back into the into the fabric. So especially pina, since it's a plant, like it relies on moisture to stay like flexible and to stay together and to not become brittle. Uh, so uh, so yeah, steam is your friend. So you want to steam your barong before you use it, and uh, if you don't use it for a while, maybe like once a year. Because if you live in like a dry environment, like New York, like in New York, our winters are very dry. Mm -hmm. So like. Uh, uh, it's good to at least get some, infuse some, uh, some, some moisture back into the fabric when it's in a dry season. So like, even out here, like in the desert, uh, you have some desert climate here in California, Nevada. Um, yeah, you wanna, you wanna infuse, infuse uh, moisture as much as possible. How do you clean it though after you use it? Okay. Do you wash it hand wash? Or what? Yes, hand wash. Hand wash only. You wanna use gentle detergent. Right. Um, okay, so. Hand wash cycle in the in the washing machine no. or hand wash? No, 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 no machine. No, okay, yes. So let me go back. <laughs> okay. No washing machines um, because it's no dry, yeah. 
no dry cleaning yet because the washing machine is going to be a because the fabric is so thin. So uh, yeah, we don't want it to pull because it will rip, and so and it's possible for it to get caught, and it's just a little too harsh. So uh, wool life is what I use. Uh, gentle detergent would be great. Uh, so I always tell people spot clean. Okay. So um, so with every barong, I I provide a camisa de chino. Mm -hmm. So like you're going to have very little direct skin to barong contact. So the direct contact is gonna be at the collar and like usually where the sleeves are crossed. So you wanna spot clean those areas because you're not gonna have a whole, I mean, if you if you sweat a lot or you know, if you have you get some stains on it, spot clean, you only wanna clean it when you really have to. So if it's like excessive sweat or excessive odor or excessive uh, stains, that's when you, so like you don't wanna do it after everywhere necessarily. So, um, so yes, you would, you would uh, like fill up a basement or the tub with a, a big basin, a tub uh, with uh, with water. Warm, hot, cold, does it matter? Uh, I think it doesn't matter. But Tap I, water. I, 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 let's go cold because it's environmentally okay, okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, and then you just uh, you just put some put some detergent in there and have it have a nice lather going. And so just. You want to swish it around in there. You don't want to like scrub. Right. You don't want to wring it. Exactly. You don't want to do that stuff. You just want to like swish it around and let the let the detergent do its work. See. And so, uh, if you have some tough stains, if it doesn't all come out when you do that, um, you just you, uh, maybe like when you're just spot cleaning. What I would do, I'll just give you an example. A friend of mine at a wedding gave me a hug. She was wearing lipstick. I had lipstick all over my paint and it was horrible. It was bright red. So I ran to the bathroom. I got some hand soap. I wet, I wet the stain and I, I left the soap on there. Like I just covered it in soap. I let it sit there for a day. The next day I rinsed, I rinsed it off. Half of it was gone. I did that one more time again. The next day, completely gone. So yeah, so like, uh, so not even you, you don't even really need detergent all the time. Mm -hmm. Like if you've got a pretty good hand soap, that would be good. So um, anyway, uh, I forgot to say how to rinse. So you would just um, you just you just like uh, like spray the water if you can, or just like hold it underneath the faucet to, to rinse. And then just repeat doing that until until all the all the soap is gone. Uh, maybe like press it gently. Right. Like I just I just don't want people to, to, ring. to ring it. Yeah, you 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 ruin the form of the barong anyway, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but see, that's what I was gonna say earlier. Even the washing is an art. Yeah, right? yeah, it's a very yeah, it's a very very gentle art. Right, so, right. Yeah, and so um, yeah, you want to be as gentle with it as possible. Let the water do the work. Let the uh, let the detergent do the work. The soap do the work. So from someone who couldn't find a barong that he liked in 2015 and launched his business in 2017, now in 2021, yes. how many barongs do you own now? That's a good question. Uh, I've made a whole bunch for myself when I was teaching myself how to make barongs. And so like I've got a good 50 myself. Wow. Yeah, when you say teaching that. yourself, do you actually sew or? I don't, but what I would do is I would measure myself and I would, I would send the measurements to uh, my tailors in the Philippines, and I would see like, okay, how can I make this fit like, um, like, like a yeah, like a more tailored fit without with give and, and I could strike the balance of like, not ripping it when I move, right. but I wanted to like to be able to be form fitting and still like preserve the integrity of the of the fabric. And yeah. and for someone who doesn't know what forms of like embroidery they want, do you have samples that they can choose from? Or? Yes, uh, we have pictures on the website and then when I meet people in person like I bring samples with me as well so uh, so yeah there's a bunch on the website and even if they're if they're not uh, crazy about anything on the website like we're we're able to try to do like customized designs and uh, my embroiders in the Philippines always have new designs as well so like I, I offer people a bunch of options in case they're not satisfied with something that I offer online. So for a busy entrepreneur like yourself, traveling a lot, right? Yes. Um, also a lawyer. Yes. How important is breakfast to you? It's extremely important because I'll go through a day and not have a whole lot of time. So like when I'm at home, I, I try to at least get something in my stomach and it just sets the tone for the day because, you know, if you're hangry, you know, you're not going to do anything with a very good like mood so um so yeah extremely important and um it's usually my most substantial meal as well because like i, I try not to eat as heavy as as a breakfast but um 
but yes, uh, I, I make sure I get it in. I imagine too, for someone like you, like always on the go, meeting clients from cli uh, client to client to client. Yes. Um, on the go breakfast is very important. Extremely important it, because sometimes I just, not sometimes, most of the time I don't have a whole lot of time. So yes, I, I, if I can save a few minutes, a few seconds, like it all helps. Yes, one thing is sure, one of the most important things that is a common ground for successful Filipinos that we interview here on the show is that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It's what sustains them through their busy schedules. Similar to Randy, when you're on the go, sometimes it's difficult to sit down for a full breakfast, but thankfully McDonald's can save the day. And so this is for the moms and dads out there, for those working overnight shifts, even you have time for this breakfast meal. I'm talking about the sausage McMuffin with egg from McDonald's. Uh, this is for all those who can appreciate a quick yet satisfying breakfast. Now grab two for just $4.50. There's a meal for every morning at McDonald's.